loving God, our Father and our friend. We are weak, but thou art strong. We are so happy, Lord, to know that there is answer to our questions. There is a balm in Gilead for our sickness. There is a source of food for our hunger. We are happy, Lord, that you are our hall in hall. And we want to thank you, Lord, for what you have been doing in us and through us. And we ask that you will continue to keep us as we travel through this journey. You promised to give us the victory and we are claiming it today. So once more, Lord, this mortal lips, I present to you, may your holy words be implanted in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Onward and upward to victory. We have before us a warfare, a lifelong conflict with Satan and the seductive temptations. This conflict, as we are told, is drawing to its close. The prophet Ellen White in Great Controversy, page 518 and paragraph 1, puts it in these words. She says, the great controversy between Christ and Satan that has been carried forward for nearly 6,000 years is soon to close. She went further to say, and the wicked one redoubles his effort to defeat the work of Christ in man's behalf and to fasten souls in his snares, to hold the people in darkness and impenitence till the Savior's mediation is ended and there is no longer a sacrifice for sin is the object which he seeks to accomplish. By now, my brothers and sisters, you should know that the devil, the enemy which we are up against, is no novice when it comes to warfare. You see, our enemy has packed under his belt more than 6,000 years of experience, and none of us here are 90. Jesus called him in John 10 and verse 10. Jesus says that he is a thief. And his mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. As the prophet says, his main aim is to fasten your soul and mine in his snares. This foe is a mighty general who controls the minds of evil angels and with well matured plans and skillful movement he is warring against Christ to prevent the salvation of souls. Great Controversy page 519 and paragraph 2 we are told something about the enemy that each one of us needs to pay attention to the prophet says Satan well knows that all whom he can lead to neglect prior and a study a searching of the scripture will be overcome by his attack 
Let me just help us to understand. Let me go back to the passage here. The prophet did not say all those who neglect prayer and a searching of the scriptures may be overtaken. She says the devil knows that all who neglect these powerful weapons will be overcome. And as a result of that, she says, therefore, he invents every possible device to engross the mind. And the question that each one of us need to ask ourselves today is what is the devil using to engross my mind that I am not spending the quality time necessary with God? With this knowledge that that old rascal have been he has he have been creating havoc and reaping great success with these devices satan is up on our tracks he is determined to overcome God's commandment keeping people with his temptation and if we give we should not give him any place with his devices God promises us to give us strength so that we can overcome his devices but we need to look to him because he is the author and finisher of our faith steadfast in the faith we shall have strength to depart from all iniquity those who keep the commandments of God will be a power in the land if they live up to their light and privileges but we are told on page 518 of the same book great controversy the prophet says when there is no special effort made to resist his power when indifference prevail in the church and the world satan is not concerned let me read that again when there is no special effort made to resist his power when indifference prevail in the church and the world satan is not concerned for he is in no danger of losing those whom he is leading captive at his will let me fix that the devil is not concerned when we leave our home on Sabbath morning and come to church. He has no problem with that. Because by now we know that the devil has his agent sitting in the pews on Sabbath morning to cause disruption to ensure that the minds of God's children are not focused on him. To worship him in spirit and in truth but it is when we decide to put aside the cares of this life when we decide to place our mind on the prize that the devil is concerned because he knows that God will do nothing with less than a hundred percent of our being so the devil will be satisfied with 0.02% of our worship because he knows that if he gets that much automatically he has the entire worship so my brothers and sisters we should be aware that this war that we are caught up in the midst of it's not a fairy tale it's not a dream it is a real war 
that is taking place behind the scenes and every man and woman and boy and girl is caught up in the midst of this warfare. The sad thing is that this war has claimed many as casualties. And God today is cautioning all of us here to be aware of that old serpent called the dragon who is seeking to devour our souls. You see, right here on the border of Canaan, unlike Israel of old we cannot afford to let down our guard we must press onward upward for victory is in sight see the enemy will use every argument every deception to entangle the souls and in order to win the crown of life we must put forth earnest persevering effort we must not lay off the harbor or leave the battlefield until we have gained the victory and can triumph in our redeemer paul in ephesians chapter 6 verses 11 through to 13 you know it it says put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil verse 12 says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places Wherefore, he says, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand to withstand the in, in the evil day. And having done all, he says, stand. You see, the captain of our army, his name is Jesus. He has provided the armor that each one of us need for this warfare. But let me remind us, my brothers and sisters, that though the armors are provided, we have a responsibility to ensure that we put on every single piece and be ready for the war that is before us. Peter in first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 he says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour and john in first john chapter 4 gives us a reminder he says ye are of god little children and have overcome them because listen to this part greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world I want to remind us that we are up against a lion that roars. But the good thing is that we have a lion on our side that is a conquering lion because he is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. As long as we continue to keep our eyes fixed upon the author and finisher of our faith we have victory we can gain victory through his name our only hope and salvation is in overcoming as Christ overcame God has sought to teach us many lessons in life through various simple means you see, these lessons that God used, they are designed to encourage and to equip us as we seek to overcome in this life. He uses nature. He uses insects. 
he uses animals and the list goes on Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6 the Bible says go to the hands thou sluggard consider her ways and be wise in Luke chapter 12 verses 27 and 28 he says consider the lilies how they grow they toil not they spin not and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these if then God so clothes the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the hoven how much will ye be clothed you or ye of little faith if you have ever considered a hark in the sky pursuing after a dove have you ever seen the drama an eagle or a chicken hawk seeking after a dove you see instinct has taught the dove that in order for the hawk to seize his prey he must gain a loftier height than his victim and so she rises higher and still higher in the blue dome of heaven ever pursued by the heart which is seeking to obtain the advantage but in vain the dove is safe as long as she allows nothing to stop her flight or draw her earthward but let her once falter and take a lower flight and her watchful enemy will swoop down upon his victim so as long as the dove soar higher and higher he knows that that ark will not have anything to eat but as soon as she falter and goes lower and lower she knows that her life is at risk because she would become the victim of that ark and so again and again have we watched this scene with almost breathless interest all our sympathies with the little dove how sad we should have felt to see it fall victim to the cruel heart when we see that dove instead of soaring above the heights falter and that ark began to devour his prey we become sad but even in that scenario i want to tell us today there is a spiritual lesson for us to avoid becoming a prey to the enemy we must soar higher and higher pressing onward and upward because victory is sure to be gained if we falter and take a lower flight in our pursuit for righteousness the watchful dragon that is called the devil and satan is there to swoop down upon us and overtake us like a flood and so we must be reminded that we are saved by climbing round after round mountain step after step to the heights of Christ's ideal for us thus is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption you see God 
has called his people to glory and virtue let me say that again God has called his people to glory and virtue and these will be manifested in the lives of all those who are truly connected with him because having become partakers of the heavenly gift we are to go on unto perfection being kept by the power of God through faith God will accept nothing less than perfection God will never ask us to do something that he does not equip us to achieve. And so when God says, be ye perfect as your father which is in heaven, he knows we cannot achieve that on our own. And so he provides the power, he provides the example for us to achieve that. John 17 verse 3 Jesus says and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent it is important that we remember that our adversary is doing everything in his power to destroy our soul but God on the other hand has done everything he's doing everything and he will do everything to ensure that we make it into his kingdom but heaven needs our cooperation God has done all that he can but unless we play our part that which he has done will not benefit us we must press onward we must move upward to victory first john chapter 2 verses 3 through to 6 says and hereby we do know that we know him do you know jesus and hereby we do know that we know him how will we know if we know him if we keep his commandment verse 4 says he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandment is a liar and the truth is not in him but whosoever keepeth his words in him Verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. And this is my favorite part of the scripture here in this passage. Verse 6. It says, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked we cannot dwell in christ if we are moving in a different direction as amos ask can two walk together save they be agreed none we are told need to fail of attaining in his spear to perfection of character by the sacrifice of christ provision have been made for the believers to receive all things that pertain to life and goodness let me let me read that again by the sacrifice of Christ by what by the sacrifice of Christ provision have been made for the believers to receive all things that pertain to to life and godliness God calls upon all of us to reach the standard of perfection and places before us the example of Christ's character heaven is depending on us 
to display the character, the righteous character of Jesus. We know that the devil launched an attack on the character of Jesus. I realized something about God. You see, God has a way of bringing out the best out of the worst. We understand that we are living in the last days of earth's history. And John in the book of Revelation tells us that the last period of earth's history, those who proclaim to be called by the name of God, they will be in a period called the Laodiceans. When you read the third chapter of Revelation, you will understand that there was nothing good that was said about Laodicea. But you see, my brothers and sisters, it is out of Laodicea that will come a set of people who will be reflecting the character of Jesus when there is no intercessor in the sanctuary. And so God will bring the best out of the worst. In his humanity, Christ has perfected life of constant resistance of the devil. The Savior showed that through cooperation with divinity, human beings may in this life attain to perfection of character. And so today we must remember that there is no turning back. We must move onward and upward to victory because victory belongs to us. This is God's assurance to us that we too may obtain complete victory. The part of the Christian is to persevere in overcoming every fault. Let me say that again. The path of the Christian is to persevere in overcoming every fault and we know that it's not the big things that most of us have challenges with Jesus says he that is faithful in that which is least shall also what be faithful in that which is much and so she says that we should persevere in overcoming every fault the big ones as well as the small ones and so constantly we should pray to the savior to heal the disorders of our sin sick soul he has not the wisdom of strength to overcome these things belong to the Lord we cannot do it on our own but God bestows on us in our humiliation and contrition he has provided help that we can be overcomers you see we my brothers and sisters we have the most powerful weapons at our disposal but the sad thing about it is that sometimes we forget sometimes we do not use it as we are to can you imagine a soldier in the midst of a fierce battle a soldier probably in Ukraine while 
the tanks are sending missiles and wild bullets are scattered in every direction can you imagine that so that soldier having a m16 rifle over his shoulder but in order to retaliate at the enemy he has a slingshot firing stones and that's so we are sometimes because we are told that prayer is the best weapon that we have to fight in this war but sometimes when the devil confronts us we forget to pray we try everything else and when it all fails we say there's nothing left but to pray so the first resource is left at the end but I want to remind someone today that there is a mighty power in prayer. Our great adversary is constantly seeking to keep the troubled soul away from God. An appeal to heaven by the homeless saint is more to be dreaded by Satan than the decrees of cabinet or the mandates of kings. And the church didn't hear that. So let me repeat it. An appeal to heaven by the homeless saints is more to be dreaded by Satan than the decrees of cabinets or the mandates of king. The devil is afraid when the weakest saints go down on their knees than any man can be afraid of any laws that any government can put in place. But sadly, the enemy holds many of us from prayer. By telling us that you do not feel your prayers and that you would better wait until you realize more of the spirit of intercession, lest your prayer should be a mockery. But let me tell you, we must say to Satan, It is written that men ought always to pray and not faint. See one songwriter says when you don't feel like praying pray when you think you just can't make it pray why precious to the father's ears are three words lord i'm here so when you don't feel like praying pray we should pray until we do have the burden of our wants upon our soul. And if we persevere, we shall have it. We are told that there is no good gift that the Father will withhold from us. And so, the Lord, listen this. The Lord knows and the devil knows that we cannot resist the temptation of Satan without power from on high. Let me say that again. The Lord knows and the devil, the enemy also knows that we cannot resist temptations of the devil without power from on high. The question is, do we know? And so for this reason, the evil one seeks to hinder us from laying hold upon him who is mighty to save. Our Lord make it our duty as well as our privilege to connect our weakness, our ignorances, our need with his strength and his wisdom is righteousness see God unites his infinite power with the effort of finite beings that 
we may be more than victors or more than conquerors in the battle with the enemy of our souls and we are told that the angels are amazed that men regard so lightly and indifferently the vital truth which means so much to the sinner and continue in willing subjects under captivity of Satan and sin. The angels are amazed. And so we are encourage to cultivate habits of contemplation of the self-denial and self-sacrifice of the life of Christ until we shall have a deep sense of the aggress aggravating character of sin and hate it as a vile thing that it is if we are going to be in the likeness of Christ, we must aid sin. Coming down in life sketches, page 196, and paragraph 2, listen to what the servant of God says. In reviewing our past history, having traveled over every step of advance to our present standing, I can say praise God. As I see what the Lord has wrought, I am filled with astonishment and with confidence in Christ as our leader. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way that the Lord has led us and is teaching in our past history you see Israel have a serious memory problem let me say that again Israel have a serious memory problem it is called SAD, spiritual Alzheimer's disease. You see, when we look at the history of Israel, seeing God working marvelously for them, and the next moment, they started murmuring and complaining. If we go back to Exodus, looking at God and in working deliverance for them with the ten plagues that was poured out upon the Egyptian with the greatest one that took place the night before deliverance and there caught up right before the Red Sea they forgot what the Lord has done and so they say because there was no grave in Egypt the Lord has brought us out here to destroy us and we watch the Israelite on their journey that time after time as God delivered them this moment and the next moment they came up on a different situation they had forget what the Lord has done for them and instead of seeking the Lord they begin to murmur and complain you see it is why God gave Israel memorial and monuments you can remember as Israel stepped through Jordan on their conquest of Canaan they were encouraged to set up a monument with 12 stones on the banks of Jordan and the purpose was 
to remind them to remind their children of who God is and of the victory that he has brought in the lives of their fathers so it is important for us to note because sometimes we spend time criticizing Israel back then and not realizing that Israel today is the same as Israel yesterday and this is why the prophet Ellen White one of my favorite passages in the spirit of prophecy taken from desire of ages page 83 and paragraph 4 she encourages us to ensure that we do not fall in the same category that we do not make the same mistakes today as Israel of olden days because she knows that we have a memory problem and so she says it will be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplating of the life of Christ. She says we should take it point by point and let the imagination grasp each scene, especially the closing ones. She wants us to reflect daily on what the Lord has went through in order for us to gain the victory over sin that we do not forget. And so she says, she continue, as we thus dwell upon the great sacrifice for us, our confidence in him will be more constant. Our love will be quickened and we shall be deeply imbued with his spirit if we would be saved at last we must she says listen to the word the choice of words she says we must learn the lesson of penitence and humiliation where at the foot of the cross my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us today. Let us not allow the distraction of this world to cause us to lose out on the prize that is set before us. Let us move onward and upward and gain the victory because Christ has paved the path for us and so victory is inside so let us go forward my brothers and sisters because only in a few more moments do we have to fight in this victory in this warfare but he that endure to the end we are told the same shall be saved